Welcome to the ELN studio. Good morning. Thanks for coming by. Yes, thank you. Congratulations on the biennial. How's it going so far? It's going very well. We have over 6,000 people here, and there's a lot of sessions going on, so a lot of excitement. So the theme this year is international, interdisciplinary, and relevant. Yes. Connect that for me to early childhood development. The society is very interested in uh, early child, in, in child development and developmental science, and then science to action, how that could have uh, an impact. Uh, interdisciplinary is a natural because child development involves many disciplines, psychology, sociology, psychiatry, pediatrics, economics, you name it. International because we're in a global society and then relevance because we're trying to bring that basic scientific knowledge to bear on practice, policy, and public attention. Isn't that th such an important component of the research to make it practical and actionable, make it tangible for parents, for practitioners? Absolutely important. And one of the things we've learned, the hard way, but learned over yeah. time, is that it used to be that academic researchers uh, thought that the direction of communication was one way, where we academics would learn something and then we would lay it upon the public. We've learned that the public needs to be involved from the very beginning. So they could uh, tell us what to research, tell us what the problems are, tell us what the perspectives are. So we've really established two-way partnerships. Also, I would assume the translational process for any researcher to see the research, see the insights in action yes. and have them applied in a house, in a school, in a, in a community, it's got to make a big difference. Makes a big difference and having that two-way communication right from the beginning will help the interventions that we develop be relevant, be able to be disseminated, be able to have an impact. In my own career I've developed interventions early on that seemed wonderful but could never be implemented in a practical, in a community setting. And so I've learned right from the very beginning to be thinking about interventions that could be disseminated. So let's talk about your research. First of all, I read 500 scientific articles, 90,000 or more than citations. Do you charge royalties? <laughs> no. Because there's a side <laughs> Nobody's business. Nobody's getting wealthy here. <laughs> well, once we're done with this, yeah. I think there's a royalty business yeah. that you're missing out on with 90,000 yeah. citations. The, heart of your research, or at least one area, um, you've been instrumental in understanding the development and prevention of aggressive and violent behaviors. Right. Tell me, I mean, I, I know as a lay person what that means, but if, tell me kind of clinically in language that I can understand what yeah, that very means. Very briefly, and, you know, yeah. when I was young growing up on the south side of Chicago, I saw a lot of kids getting into trouble and became interested in how to prevent them from becoming juvenile delinquents. So I did a lot of research on, on how it is that kids come to be aggressive and did some interventions. But then over time I got frustrated that that was even too late. One of the early uh, factors leading some children to come to be delinquents was their early life experiences in disruptive homes, being the victims of child abuse, being the victims of a lot of stressful environments. So I became very interested in preventing child abuse as a way to prevent children from growing up to be aggressive and violent themselves. So for the last 15 years or so, my interests have really been on prevention of child abuse. You, you also developed a framework for intervening early to prevent the costly consequences of violence for children and their communities. Describe that framework. One of the things that psychologists have done is to develop interventions, but if we apply them to only 50 children in a community, we're not really having an impact on the community. So around 2000, I became very interested in public health, in approaches to having population impact. We searched for a while for the silver bullet intervention, and there is not one. One of the things we've learned is that children come to be aggressive and parents come to be abusive. Uh, in many different ways. So much can go into it. So Talk much. about interdisciplinary, so many That's right. impacts. W what is Durham Connects and yeah. how important is that to you? It's very important to me right now. Um, so uh, Durham Connects started in Durham, North Carolina uh, with this idea of how could we have uh, a public health uh, impact. 
We learned and noticed around the year 2000 that Durham, North Carolina had a very high child abuse rate, especially in the first couple of years of life. It was higher than the state of North Carolina average, which was higher than the national average. It had to do with poverty, had to do with a lot of drug use, a lot of violence in the community. So we embarked on a, you know, a 20 year period to uh, try to figure out what to do about it. We made a lot of attempts, a lot of failures I could tell you about, but that's the way things go. We were very fortunate to have long-term financial funding from the Duke Endowment, a fabulous organization, yeah. and they invested in us. And ultimately, we arrived on this idea of reaching every family at birth, in the hospital where they give birth, and then in their homes several weeks after, reach out to them, congratulate them on the birth, but then try to understand what their needs are. We use nurses, they're wonderful. Yeah. What we learned is that every mother and father loves a nurse coming into their home to help them. So the nurse does that uh, in several hours, gets to know the family and tries to understand what their needs are. And then we try to bring community resources to meet their needs. And Ken, to close out, because then I'll let you get back uh, to this to sure. the show that you're running. There's 6,000 people waiting for you, you know. Big picture. Um, I, I looked at the Center for Child and Family Policy, yeah. um, which you helped start. And one part of it that caught my eye is the focus the center puts on engaging with policymakers. Yes. What's your view of where our policymakers are in terms of understanding and supporting the important ideals behind early childhood development. Surveys show that overwhelmingly more than three quarters of American public favors greater investments in early childhood. They get the message. So if we're scientifically evidence-based and thinking about economic efficiency, I have found policymakers really to be embracing what we're doing. And so Durham Connects program we now call Family Connects yeah. as we disseminate it nationally. And we're in three dozen communities across the country that are interested. So policymakers are, are right on board. That's uh, great to hear. Well, thank you. Thank you for your work and thank you for stopping by the Ellen thank Studio. Thank you for doing this. Appreciate you being here.